Hello, welcome to the channel. If you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back. If you're not, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, so today I'm gonna do a review on my Z3, kind of a buyer's guide slash review. Uh, I've owned this car for right at three years, uh, maybe a month over three years. I've put uh, about 40, over 40,000 miles on it in the last three years. So uh, I've always wanted to do a video about this car, but I wanted to, uh, you know, have some time to, develop a, a you know a, a better opinion of just driving it or having it for a couple of weeks and then doing a video about it so done a lot of repairs to this car small ones uh so if you are curious about that you can look at my other videos so anyway it's a uh beautiful day here in texas beautiful sunny day october 16th 2020 so we'll get started i'm gonna start with the inside uh probably move to the motor trunk and then we'll just kind of do an overall impression and uh talk about some things about the car from there so let's get started one of the top features of the car obviously is the convertible top so this car is a 96 model it didn't come with a power top i don't even know if that was available in 96 so let's uh show you how the top goes up and down So it's just that easy. There's a latch on either side of the windshield uh, that's on the top. So you just have to, <clears throat> it's pretty easy to reach from the inside of the car uh, when you're sitting in the driver's seat and you just raise the top and flip it back. Something that's not easy to do is to get the top back up when you're inside the car. Uh, it's it's kind of heavy once it's folded back and it's, it's in a weird position. There's no spring assist like on the Miatas. So I'll just go ahead and put the top back up and show you how that goes. There you go. I'll well now we'll go inside the car and we'll do it from the inside of the car so you can see where the latches are and see how that works. Okay, so here we are inside the car. So you've got a latch. Sometimes it's easier to flip the little sun visor down to get. So there's a latch. This is the driver's side. You just flip that back. And then I'm reaching from the driver's seat over to the one on the passenger side. Flip that back. Lift from the middle. And there's the top. Okay, we'll start here at the instrument cluster. So let me put in the key. Well, let me go over the key first. So the key is, this is the key. This is a factory key. It's got a button on it. The button does not unlock or lock the car. Uh, it's got a light. I don't know if you, hopefully you can see that. So it's just a light. Uh, this car did come with a dealer installed uh, alarm system that would unlock and lock the doors. It had a little key fob doesn't work anymore. Uh, I've messed with it, put a new battery in it, tried to fool around with it, can't get it to work. But so it's just old school. You stick the key in the door and uh, that works fine. So we'll put the key in. Here's the instrument cluster. <clears throat> the very, very irritating noise it makes. So this car's got 196, 584 miles on it. Uh, the gauge cluster is really basic. You've got your uh, fuel gauge there, speedometer, tachometer, and uh, water temperature. So the trip computer, as you can see here, it's uh, 90,000 or uh, 90 miles showing on it. So you've got this little button here. All that does is reset that. That's it. Doesn't have a trip, doesn't have an A and B trip meter, doesn't show miles per gallon, miles to empty, any of that thing. So this is a very analog car, even for 90, uh, 1996 standards. So yeah, that's pretty much it on the instrument cluster. You've got all your warning lights, oil pressure, battery, uh, check engine. Of course, that's only, turn the car on, that goes away. Uh, like every good old BMW, it's got the uh, airbag light on, uh, put the parking brake down. So yeah, there you go. So no engine lights on in this car. I keep it really well maintained. And uh, that's it for that. So let's 
shut the car off. <clears throat> so here we go. Basic AC controls, uh, which I like. Where's the air going? Hot or cold? Fan speed. And then here is the, that turns on the compressor, the AC compressor. Uh, and then this is your recirculate valve. So usually when I'm running the air conditioner in here, I just click both those on and I'm good to go. So later on in these cars, they did come with traction control, uh, or I guess it was called like dynamic stability control. Uh, this car doesn't have any of those. This is an early 96 car. Uh, this little LED here is part of the alarm. Uh, like I said, that's installed on the car. None of that stuff works now. Uh, it's a very basic clock. You probably won't be able to see it since I got the top down. But you just set the hour and minute right there. It's a little digital clock. You can set it to either uh, like military time where it's in uh, 0 through 24 or just AM, PM or just a 12-hour clock. So anyway, it's just really simple. Uh, this radio is not obviously the factory radio. It's a cheap 30-something dollar uh, I think I paid 35 or $40 for that on Amazon. It's been a good radio. It's just not a really fancy one. Doesn't have a CD player or anything like that. Uh, this car was originally equipped with a cassette player and in the trunk, it has a six disc, uh, CD changer. We'll take a look at that whenever we, uh, look at the trunk. So everything else is pretty basic, uh, glove box there. I've got the original owner's manual and all that for this car. Uh, I've also got a stack of uh, papers from the people that owned it originally. Uh, this is your cruise control switch there. All that works great, fine. Uh, this is your uh, windshield wiper stock there. And then over here on this side, you've got, uh, this is for your bright lights or your passing light, and then it's your turn signal. And uh, I've heard other reviewers talk about BMW, uh, these earlier BMW, and it is this, when you click that thing to turn the turn signal, it's, it's hard to explain, but uh, when I first heard that, I thought, well, that sounds kind of silly. Uh, but it really has a positive, I don't know, just a, just a neat feel to it. So, and then, of course, over here, you've just got your headlight switch. And that's it. It's a really basic car. Now, something to note, uh, if you're buying one of these cars, looking for one of these, uh, the this headlight switch, this little cap that's on here, it's it's almost always missing on these cars, on any any car that's got some mileage on it. Uh, the way this is designed, it's, it's, it's not a very good design. So it's got this cap here that pops into that. And when you pull on this, even after I installed this new cap on there, when you, when you pull on that, you tend to, to pull that little cap off. So whenever I pull the headlights out, I, I kind of reach behind there in this area here and pull it out. I, I try not to pull it from the cap. So the reason is, you know, once you pull that off, you wear out the little tabs, it gets lost. You put it in the car, it gets lost, whatever. This little cap right here uh, for this light switch is, is man, I, I bought that replacement thing. It's about 27, 28 bucks for that little cap that just snaps in there. So something to keep in mind uh, when you're buying one of these cars, you know, the prices of some of these little silly things, it doesn't seem like much, but you know, you, you want to take that into account whenever you're buying one of these. Speaking of that, let's move over here to the door panel. So your your radio, you've got speakers in the footwell. I don't know how well you can see that speaker grill down there. And you've got these speakers on the door. Th those are the only speakers that this car came with. I think some of the later models uh, had some here in, in, in the back kind of waterfall console. Uh, but this car only has the basic ones. So opening the door... Let me take the key out. It's kind of irritating, that sound. <clears throat> so this handle here, when I first got the car, came with the handle, but the design of this, where this fastens down here on the bottom, uh, there is, it, it's just a metal tab that's epoxied or molded into the foam that's inside of this handle here. So over time, when you're pulling on this handle, closing the door, closing the door, like if you swing the door wide and you're, you're you're tugging on this handle it weakens this area right here so a lot of times when i close the door i'll get it close like that uh i want this thing to last forever this piece right here i bought this about three years ago when i first got the car to replace that it's very expensive this little piece right here was 150 bucks 
It was an original BMW part, a uh, new old stock. And I mean, that's pretty much what you got to have. I don't think anybody's, you know, makes uh, aftermarket ones of these. And uh, it's just kind of a weird part. I think it only came on this car. So to find a, a tan one that matched my interior, uh, it took a little bit of hunting and uh, yeah, it was 150 bucks. So that's, you know, that's quite a bit of money for, for a little piece like that. So I, tr I treat it very gently. Uh, and then of course you've got your power mirror uh, switches here on the door. Uh, once you, you know, get them set, I don't really mess with that anymore. So that's pretty much it for the interior. Storage wise, you've got some door pockets. You've got this little thing right there. Got a Snickers bar wrapper in there. Probably should take that out. Uh, I think this is a coin holder down in there, but there's not a lot of internal storage. Uh, you're, you've got this little console here. Uh, your cup holders, very tiny uh, cup holders. Uh, you can get a Red Bull, normal size cups in there, these bigger, big cups. Uh, I don't even think that like a, a 20 ounce Coke bottle fits in there. So, and then you've got some storage behind the seat here. You've got this little compartment. Uh, it's lockable. Most of the ones I've seen on these cars are almost always broken. The little tabs and stuff, which mine is. Uh, I've tried to find that piece at a salvage yard, nearly impossible. So, and then something else that broke commonly on these cars is this console lid here. Uh, I've only found a few of these lids, like new old stock ones. They are like 300 bucks. They're very expensive. That's why I haven't replaced that one. I think there's somebody that makes some ones out of wood that you can cover in leather, but I just haven't fooled with it. Really doesn't bother me that bad. That would be nice to have that and, and you know, for the looks of the car, but I'm not too worried about it. So, and then, like I said, there's a door pocket on that door. So let me step out here. Oh, let me touch on some other thing. The uh, sun visors, they're very small. Uh, let me get out of the car for, for scale here. So they're very small. They don't come down very far. Uh, they're, they're really not that useful. Only certain times of the day because you can't adjust. There's no adjustability to them. But they're there and, and they do work sometimes so they serve their purpose so all right let's uh step in the engine bay okay here we are in the engine bay uh, this is the 1.9 liter uh it was 138 horsepower and 120 27 something like that odd pound feet of torque uh, it's not a super powerful engine. Uh, this car weighs uh, right at 2,700 pounds, so it's not bad. But some things to look for in here, uh, of course, your valve cover gasket, simple things like that. Uh, just look around for oil leaks, that kind of thing when you're buying one of these. This has been a just downright reliable engine for me. Uh, I bought it and it had 150-something uh, thousand miles on it. And, of course, you just saw that it's got like 196 on it now. So I've had zero trouble out of this car as far as reliability. Uh, the only, th well, let me take, the, let me step back on that. The only thing that's gone out was the alternator. So the alternator did go out on the car. I mean, that goes out on any car. As far as the engine, nothing. Uh, I've, I've got some, you know, minor repairs, oil leaks, things like that, that I've fixed on the car. And uh, of course you can go back and look at my other videos for that kind of thing. Uh, some of these cars I've seen, they have the battery here in the front. This car doesn't. Uh, so if you're jumping one of these off, We'll look at the battery in the trunk. So if you're jumping one of these off, you always want to use uh, the, the terminals here. So you've got your positive one there and then you've got your ground jump point there. Uh, you know, the manual, everything, BMW people will tell you, don't jump it from the battery there in the back. So this is a little uh, uh, diagnostic port there. Uh, it, it takes a really old school uh, diagnostic plug. This is one of the first ODB2 cars so the ODB2 port is inside the car and it's not under the dash it's on the side of the console let's see if we can look at it here so yeah it's actually here on the side of the on the passenger side of the console so those are just some little LED lights that I put in the car for nighttime kind of looks cool ah, looks cool to me so and anyway and then I've got a towel in there too uh, if you're a fan of South Park, you know, Tally always says, 
make sure you got a towel. Uh, the reason that's in there is this car is a 20 some odd year old convertible. The top does leak at times, little drips here and there. I don't really worry about it. Just keep a towel in there. So let's go back to the engine bay here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, your air filters here, uh, your oil filter is a cartridge style uh, BMW oil filter there. Uh, like I said, really low maintenance. You know, I've changed some gaskets here and there on it, but it's been a really good, reliable car. Doesn't use oil. Uh, that's really all I can say about the engine. So, uh, one thing about, I guess, the powertrain, of course, I don't know if I mentioned before, this car has a five speed manual. Um, did not come with the M shifter knob. I put that on there. Uh, that shifter knob when I got the car was pretty worn out and ragged and the leather was peeling and looked like junk. So I bought a new one off of Amazon. It's an actual BMW uh, factory one. And uh, that thing was like 80, almost $90. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, they make other ones, you know, you can put an aftermarket one on there and that kind of thing. But uh, I had gotten a Amazon gift card from work for Christmas and uh, something I probably wouldn't have spent that much money on, but I just used the gift card for that. So made it pretty nice and it, and it feels good in the hand so yeah trying to see if there's anything else about the engine that i'm talking about that's really it it's been a good reliable car you know i do my oil changes on it every 5,000 miles uh, i can't really say much about that uh anything bad about it really so let's uh move to the trunk and see what's going on We're back at the there. trunk uh the way you get into the trunk you've got you know you just put your key in there uh, this is a push button you push the button uh, and you just kind of hold the button underneath, lift up, and uh, to reveal the trunk. So it's got, I mean, it's not a huge trunk by any, any stretch of the imagination, but unbelievably, and you can look at some of my other videos of me taking this thing on road trips, I drive it all the time. This is my daily driven car. I've got that F-150 over there, uh, trying to keep the miles down on it. For the last three years, I've only put, actually, my son's put more miles on that thing than me. Uh, I think they've only put like 10,000 miles on that thing in the last three years. So anyway, this is the trunk. Uh, I've got, I changed out when I changed the alternator. I changed out all the uh, idler pulleys, even though they weren't bad. And I went in and changed the belt. So I stuck the old belts in here. I've got one over there. There's the AC belt. Here's the old idler pulleys. Uh, you know, just some oil just in case. Uh, got some rain x in there so that's a little storage compartment over there on that side for things here is the uh, six disc bmw cd changer i've never used this uh, it's still got the cartridge in it i don't even know if it works so anyway just kind of neat it's still there i think the dealer added that on uh but it is a bmw part uh so i've just got you know some little wrenches and that kind of thing uh, in here the car is old so you never know when you might have to work on, on the side of the road umbrella and under here this is uh that is plastic for the door panels that the uh, previous owner gave me to uh, when you take the door panels off to replace that plastic the kind of vapor barrier behind there so you've got uh your jack uh like i said that you know this car does leak a little bit so uh, there's obviously some moisture that's gotten back in here. Every once in a while, I'll find a little bit of water in the trunk, mainly in this kind of slope down area here. So just something to be aware of when you're buying one of these. So there's the factory tool set. Uh, there's something missing here. I don't know what that is. Uh, I think a screwdriver is missing from right there, but there's your lug wrench, your, uh, locator, uh, lug nut locator for putting on the, uh, when you're putting the wheel on tow hook part of the jack handle and a little uh wrench kind of a funny deal on that I, I didn't have any tools in this car and i had to change the battery out when the alternator went out on me uh, i had the car towed uh, to the closest walmart and then I, I was coming back from west texas working and i was kind of stranded it was like around midnight so i only had about 50 more miles to get back to my house so instead of, i mean I, I knew i wasn't going to find an alternator at uh you know, midnight in Weatherford, Texas. And I didn't have any tools with me anyway to do it. So I just threw a new battery in the car and then just drove home on the battery that night. So 
And then when I got home, I had to order a new alternator for it and uh, wait on that to come in. But anyway, so when I went into the Walmart to buy the new battery, you can see it's an EverStart battery there for Walmart. Uh, I thought, man, I don't have any tools. I need to get a 10 millimeter wrench because I knew that these T-bolts here for the battery were 10 millimeter. And uh, came outside, changed out the battery and all that. And then when I went to put everything back in here, I looked over here and noticed that I had a 10 millimeter right there. So I wound up spending about 15 or $20 on a cheap Walmart tool set when I didn't even need it. BMW had already thought about it there. So the spare tire, this car does come with a spare tire. I know the Z4s, I'm pretty sure none of them did. They came with run flat tires. So this car does have a donut spare. It's located here in this dealio there. So the way it works is, uh, you pull this handle here, you pull it up, and then let me see if I can get this in here. There's a spring clip right there. You can press that together, and then you can lift that up, and then once you compress that together, the, the tire will drop down in this little carriage here. And then it's got a mechanism or an apparatus, I should say. So how you keep tabs on your spare tire is, let me see if I can find it here. I haven't messed with it in a long time. Yeah, there you go. So on the spare tire, there's this, there we go. There is a little hose that connects to this Schrader valve right here. So you can check the pressure on your spare tire without having to lower everything. So that's kind of a neat deal. I don't know if a lot of people know that about these cars. People that own them probably don't even realize that. So anyway, that's what's going on there. That's the trunk. Like I said, uh, I travel with this car all the time. I drive back and forth to West Texas and uh, I carry a big duffel bag and a backpack in here, no problem. And uh, so my bag that I carry my laptop in and all that stuff, uh, I just throw it in the front seat. So anyway, uh, one other thing to note here, this is your third brake light access. Uh, whenever I got this car, this was like this. Uh, I changed all these bulbs out. They all eventually burned out and I just replaced them with LEDs. But this little bracket here that holds all this together, when you buy a new old stock one, I, I want to say they're a couple hundred bucks. They're really expensive. So from the outside of the car, you know, it doesn't look bad. Uh, one other thing too, that uh, this gasket behind here was old and dry and that was letting some water in the trunk. So I replaced that gasket. I think that was less than five bucks for that gasket. Uh, but anyway, I finally found a car at a salvage yard uh, last month, and I was able to buy this all correct uh, bracket here that's not broken clips and all that stuff. So that's going to be fixed. And then I also was able to purchase the cover that snaps in the factory cover off of a car at a salvage yard. Uh, that covers that up so from the outside at night or even during the day when you step on the brakes all the brake lights light up everything but it's a little jank when you look underneath there but hey it's an old car right so it works and i've got all the stuff to fix that i just haven't done it yet but just keep in mind you know if you're buying one of these cars that's that's something that can be pricey if you can't find the stuff at a salvage yard because these cars you, you hardly ever see them at salvage yard i keep an eye on them all the time i've got an app on my phone I think it's called Row 52, and I'm always looking for these cars uh, at the salvage yards to go see what I can pick off of them. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. So we'll close up the trunk, and then we'll kind of move to the exterior, and then we'll just do a little quick drive. So here's the exterior of the car. Uh, if you're looking for one of these or you own one, then uh, you already know kind of what it looks like. Uh, one of my favorite angles of this car is this back corner here. I really like uh, this line, this body line that starts right here and moves around to the hood right there. I think that's a really cool looking body line. <clears throat> Pardon me. In front of these cars, I don't know what they could have done different. It, it, it looks a little wimpy to me. I don't know. I, I still love it. I still love this car. I, I really love this car. So uh, the hood, when I bought the car, I didn't do this. Uh, a guy bumped somebody with it. So uh, that's where that damage is from. I've got another hood that I'm working on now. My plan is to paint this whole car. Also, it's got a wrinkle on the driver's door. <coughs> Pardon me, uh, right there. So I've got another door for it. I've got another hood for it. My plan is to paint this car uh, next spring. So hopefully, I'm just gathering all the parts and you know 
things that I need for it. Uh, the front suspension, I replaced the front suspension on this car, all the bushings, all that stuff, uh, all that kit. And I also got uh, front shocks, I mean, front struts and rear shocks that I replaced at the same time when I did redid all the suspension. I wanna say that cost me around 400 bucks. Uh, and then I did all the labor myself, so that didn't cost me anything. And of course, I don't know if you've seen my other videos there. I've got the, the vented and drilled rotors in the front. Uh, the plan is to put some on the back as well. Um, these wheels are not factory, of course. Uh, I don't remember what brand they are. They're pretty cheap. They're, they're nothing fancy for sure. I mean, they're Unilug wheels. So uh, plan is maybe late next year, get some uh, better wheels for the car. <clears throat> but these are 17s. Uh, I've got a factory wheel right here that I rolled out. The factory ones on these cars were 16s. So they came with a 225 50 16 tire. So this is a very, I don't want to say rare, but it's not a really common uh, tire. So at the time that I put these new tires, these Pirellis on there, I didn't have plans to replace the wheels, but I couldn't find anybody, uh, you know, within about a 30, 40 mile radius that had these tires in stock. So my local little uh, tire shop, an independent tire shop, ordered some new uh, 225 50 16s for me. Uh, when they got them in, uh, the date code was like uh, four, or four or five years old. I don't remember specifically, but the tires were almost or already out of, uh, you know, the date code being over four years old. So they sent them back and they were gonna have to wait on getting new ones and that kind of thing because like I said, it's not a common size that you see anymore. Back in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, this was a really common size. Uh, these came on all the 5.0 Mustangs that had 16 inch uh, wheels on them. But nowadays, it's just not a really common uh, tire size. Now I could find 205, let me show you there. These are 225 50s. I could find 205s, but they I just didn't think they would look right. It would be too small, uh, look kind of wimpy. So. Uh, I went ahead and I went with these tires here, which are 17s, and I just figured these are uh, 225, 45, 17s, which is a tire size that did come on these cars on the later ones. Uh, so uh, I figured, you know, if ever, since I do drive the car a lot, excuse me, getting up off the ground, you know, if I needed to buy a tire in an emergency, uh, somebody's gonna have this size in stock you know, versus this size. And that, that theory did get tested. Uh, it was last year, late last year, I had to, for work, drive from uh, San, from my house to San Antonio, Texas, uh, which is about a four and a half hour drive, I believe, four and a half, five hours. I drove this car down there, uh, worked down there for a few days. I work in the oil field, if you don't know. Worked down there for a few days on a project, and then I had to then drive from there to Midland, Texas, well, I came down I-10 to Ozona, Texas, and I pulled over at a gas station, and I noticed that the this right rear tire was low on air, really low. So I tried to fill it up with air, and it would air up and then just collapse back down. And I got to investigating, and on the inside sidewall, there was a huge tear in the tire, so it wasn't gonna be able to, uh, to uh, be patched, so. I drove to a little no-name, you know, I just Googled on my phone, closest tire shop I could find. Uh, drove over there really, really, thank God it was only like two blocks away. I just drove really slowly over there, like, you know, in first gear and uh, went in, asked for that tire size and bam, they had it. So uh, they start putting the tire on, everything I got fixed up, went on down the road. And while I was there just for grins, I asked him, I said, hey, do you happen to have any 225 50 16s in stock and the guy looked at me like he didn't know what i was talking about and i explained to him you know that the original wheels here were that's what that tire size was and he said no man, I, I haven't seen that in forever so it was something that he would have had to order so you know if i would have stayed with these factory wheels on that day if i would have had that same flat uh i would have been in a pickle so anyway that uh you know, those 17s changing over those 17s, I guess it's a more modern size, you could say, uh, really helped me out on that. So anyway, I'll stop rambling about that and uh, let's get in this little car and take it for a drive and enjoy some of this 
Texas blue skies. Man, it's really nice out here. It's probably like in the, in the high 70s right now. So anyway, let's do that and uh, get a little bit of a uh, driving. So before we start driving, there's something I wanted to uh, mention. Uh, these cars did come with six cylinders uh, with the uh, M52 and then the M54 as those motors came out. So you could get these with a six cylinder. Uh, which I think the M52 were like around 170 horsepower on up to uh, the M54s that came. Uh, you could get them with the 3 liter, which was 228 horsepower. Which in this little car, I've never driven one of those, but I can imagine it would be a lot of fun. So uh, I've always got my eye out for one of those 3 liter cars with a 5 speed. Uh, I, I think I would like to own one of those one day. I do want to buy another one of these. I, I really, really love this platform. But anyway, along those notes, I wanted to point out something. So, of course, this car uh, has an aftermarket exhaust tip and an exhaust that I built for the car. Uh, there's a video about that if you want to go look, watch that. So anyway, uh, one way to identify the four-cylinder cars versus the six-cylinder cars is the four-cylinder cars had a single kind of rectangular oval uh, tailpipe. So the uh, six-cylinder cars had two single small tailpipes. And of course the M cars had a pipe on each side uh, with a cutout in the bumper over there for that. So anyway, just wanted to mention that. Let's take this thing so for a I'm drive. So just rolling out of the neighborhood. Um, got that kind of loud exhaust on the car, so I try not to uh, hammer it down through the neighborhood too much. I don't want to become that guy on the corner that's got that loud, obnoxious car. So anyway, uh, best part of this car? Well, there's two, two great parts. The top, the open air, uh, makes it really fun. It's like having two cars in one. And the other thing is this five-speed transmission down here. Uh, this car with an automatic, I wouldn't suggest buying one. I just can't imagine that it would be too much fun. Maybe the six-cylinder models that have the uh, automatic, but, you know, the, the thing about this car is, for me, and, and I've really, you know, kind of bonded with this car, uh, when, whenever I uh, was looking for a fun little car to, to buy, I looked at Miatas and some other things like that, uh, and I, felt, I stumbled across this car, and... You know, it was one of the cars in my list of cars. Uh, I got a really good deal on it. I bought it from a kid for two grand. Uh, he has gave me, and I still got it, of course, a huge stack of folder, uh, a huge folder with stacks of service records in it. Uh, he bought the car from his girlfriend's aunt and uncle who originally bought this car. They paid over $30,000 for this car. I've got the original sales receipt from the car and everything, so it's kind of fun uh, to think back, you know, that this car cost that much, you know, back then when, I mean, you can get a new Miata right now uh, for around that price. Uh, I think that I think it was around $32,000, $33,000 that they paid for this car, so here over 20 years later, <clears throat> still paid more for this back then uh, than what you can get a new Miata for. So anyway, with all that being said, uh, the thing about this car is when you're driving this car, the thing that I really love, or one of the things I keep saying that there's so many things about this little car that I love, and I've just kind of fallen in love with it, uh, is when you're driving, you're driving. There's no traction control. There's no, I mean, there's anti-lock brakes, but you know, half the time the anti-lock brake light's on. Uh, and the reason for that is, uh, or that I suspect is, anti-lock brake module on this car, uh, like a lot of German design things, is kind of weird. It's located, try to straighten out the camera here, it's located in an area that's very susceptible to moisture, to rain, that kind of thing. So when it gets wet, you know, when you really need anti-lock brakes, it doesn't work. Uh, so, you know, I don't really count on those. I don't depend my life or bet my life on the anti-lock brakes on this car. Uh, but anyway, like I said, let me get back to that. When you're driving, you're driving. You're shifting. You're steering. There's no traction control. There's no lane departure. There's no, uh, you know, blind spot monitoring, all that kind of stuff. I mean, when you're driving, you're driving. You're doing something. And that's the, for me, that's the pleasure of this car is I'm driving. I, I love to drive. I love road trips. Uh, I drive a lot at work. I drive big, boring F-350 trucks, but whatever. I still enjoy driving. 
awesome. I've always enjoyed. Uh, yeah, it's just an analog car. Does have cruise control. Uh, there's no on the dash, like I said before. There's no. Hey, how many? You know, you, you, we get so spoiled in my in my pickup and my wife's Camry. The same way, you know, there's so many nannies and so many things. Uh, how many miles do I have to empty? Well, this is old school. I don't know. I mean, I just drive till you know. I just got. I just got to pay attention to the gas gauge. There's nothing that tells me, you know, how many more miles you can go before empty. And it just kind of harkens back to. I mean, it's a modern car, but it kind of harkens back to, you know, when I was a kid. I'm crowding 50, so you know, when you just drove and you didn't have all those those nannies and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's no. Well, I mean, this little radio here has Bluetooth, but you can't hear it because. Even with the top up, there's there's a lot of wind noise in this car. Make no mistake about that. It's very analog. It's very old school. With the modern touches of fuel injection, good suspension, uh, dual mass flywheel, all that makes shifting smooth, makes acceleration smooth, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so anyway, like I said, uh, this wasn't a car that I that I was specifically looking for when I bought it. But after I bought it, and I've driven it for three years now, and put a lot of miles on it, uh, I really, really have fallen in love with it. It's super fun. It's really not difficult to work on. Some of the quirky parts, door handle, that kind of thing, some of that stuff's expensive just because it's an odd part. But uh, most of the parts that are interchangeable with other BMW parts, engine parts, drivetrain parts, that kind of thing, uh, are really not that expensive. And it's really not that hard to work on. Uh, the ECU in this car is very basic. Uh, I haven't had any problems with that so far, cross my fingers. Uh, and like I said, it's just been a good, reliable car for me. I really love it. I really enjoy driving it. It's super fun. Uh, I really would like to get another one of these cars. I want to get one. And I know it sounds silly. This car is not that collectible. Uh, but I, I don't want to mess with this car too much, take it out of stock. Uh, one thing about this little 1.9 four-cylinder, something to keep in mind is there aren't a lot of hop-up parts for it. There isn't a lot you can do to this engine without spending way more than, than, than would make it worth your while unless you're just building an all-out race car. Uh, I mean, they make cams and, you know, all kinds of different things for this car. But, I, I mean, to me, it's just not worth it. I paid two grand for this car. It's a really original car. Nobody's hacked it up, goofed it up. I mean, the only thing that's not stock are the wheels, those drilled and slotted rotors, which whatever, they're the same size as the stock ones, and the exhaust that I made for it. So, uh, I don't know. I just think it's a neat car. I want to treat it right. Uh, but, like I said, but to get back to what I was saying before, I, I do want to get one of these with a six-cylinder. Uh, I, I can't imagine, or I can imagine this car with more power. I think it'd be really fun. So I've always got my eye out for the right car uh, to come along. But anyway, with that being said, I hope I haven't bored you too much. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. It's a beautiful day in Texas. I'm going to do a little bit more driving. I'm coming into a corner here, downshift. Uh, got Mr. Squirrel. Uh, there was a squirrel on the side of the road. So anyway, if you stayed this long in the video, I hope you have. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area, I don't want to steal, you know, Doug DeMiro's uh, thunder or, or try to copy that guy or anything. But if you're a car guy and you've got a cool car you'd like to see on the channel, uh, you know, I don't have to drive it. You can drive it, but we can take a look at it and uh, kind of get your opinion on it. Cool cars, weird cars. This is not really a weird car, but it's just not something you see uh, driving down the road all the time. I very rarely see these cars, uh, but when I do, uh, it's kind of fun, you know, you get a little, you get kind of the Harley wave uh, with other people that drive these cars because they know what's up with them. They're really fun. I think it's a very underrated car, uh, and I think that it will be a future classic someday. I've already, like I said, I look at these cars all the time. I've already seen the prices of these cars since I bought this car creeping up, creeping up, creeping up a little bit at a time. So, anyway, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to enjoy these uh, beautiful back roads here around my house, and we'll see you next time. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, all that fun stuff. We'll catch you next time. Thanks.